In around the year 426 BCE, Xenophon, the second most famous student of Socrates, was born in Athens. Few people have had as much influence over so many areas of study as this man, who, over the course of his life, wrote genre-defining works of history, military strategy, philosophy, economics, hunting, and much, much more. If a Renaissance man flourished in their many classically inspired talents around the 15th, 16th centuries, then Xenophon was surely their ancestor, a true Naissance man, so to speak. He was known by the beauty and excellence of his writing as Atike Musa, the Attic Muse. But further yet more, he was not simply a man confined to writing at his desk, no. He was a soldier, a warrior too. By the age of 30, he was general over 10,000 Greeks and safely led them out of deep Persia, from Mesopotamia to Greece in one of the most fantastic stories of antiquity. But that is the subject of my next video. And so let's learn more about this remarkable man. As I said, he was born between 420 and 430 BCE to the wealthy man Gurullos. Diogenes Laertius writes that he was a man an extraordinarily humble and beautiful man. In his youth, he was in love with a man named Kleinias, and wrote of him in a way which makes me wonder if he could also be considered a poet alongside every other academic skill he excelled in. Nun garego Kleinian head yon menteo mai etala panta ta en antropois kala. Tiplos de ton allon panton de xaimen, an e Kleiniu hennos ontos genestai. Caught in the moment I gaze upon Kleinias sweeter by far than all other things of beauty in the world. Even if blind to all else, were I able to gaze on him alone, I would be happy. He also became enamoured with another man though, dare I say it platonically. This other man was of course Socrates, who blocked Xenophon's path in a passage in the street one day and convinced him to become a student. And Xenophon thereon helped immortalise Socrates his entire life. He was, in fact, the first to write a Socratic dialogue, not Plato, and it's said that the two men were jealous of one another. Not quite a rivalry, and more than a little endearing. Years as a student went by, until through his friend Proxenos, Xenophon found himself an officer in the army of Cyrus the Younger, who was off to fight his brother Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Now the attempt was a failure for Cyrus, more on that in the next video, but Xenophon, after the deciding battle of Cunexa, found himself in charge of the Greek mercenaries. In masterstroke after masterstroke of retreat tactics, he safely led them back to Thalata Thalata, the sea, the sea. With his forces now in Greece, they continued fighting for hire until recruited by the Spartan general, Thibron. Recounted in his historical work Hellenica, the sequel to Thucydides' History of the Peloponnesian War, which Xenophon was said to have published and by others to have even helped write, Xenophon campaigned in victory after victory for Sparta. It was during this time he met the Eurypontid king Agesilaus of Sparta, a controversial but very influential historical figure. The two even became friends, which made Xenophon enemies back in Athens to the point where he was officially exiled. However, his wife Philesia and two sons, known as the Dioscuri, accompanied him into his official retirement to a Spartan-funded plot of land in Skylos, as Pausanias recounts. It was here that he wrote his histories, and possibly more Socratic dialogues. My favourite is his Symposium, and controversially, I actually think it's better than Plato's. At the very least, it's a lot more fun. There's a real sense of the guests getting ever so drunker as the evening conversations continue, a point of realism that Plato seems to omit. Anyway, after 20 or so years in Skylus, which used to be an Elian region, the Elians took it back from Sparta in 371 BCE after the Battle of Leuctra. However, after being tried by the Olympique Boulaire, the Olympic Council itself, he was allowed to stay there until he died in 354 BCE. A fan of hunting, he had built there a temple to Ephesian Artemis with a sanctuary and sacred enclosure. 
The locals told Pausanias that a marble statue down the road from the temple marks Xenophon's grave. Xenophon's legacy was immediate and long-lasting. His role in so many significant events of the day made him a controversial and famous figure even within his lifetime, but his talent and influence were clear to all, and the words written in his memory almost always do him justice. Not just for Cyrus did Xenophon march up to Persia, but to seek the path that leads to Zeus. His teachings let the great deeds of Greeks shine forth as he kept alive the beauty of Socrates' wisdom.